himself. So when you see a man having to help me, the correct spelling is M E T E, not M E E T. The root of it is meter. And so the right, appropriate partner gives a man the balance. So she is his help me. He's not her help me. And if a man is her help, then he's out of position. And that's why being homosexual is a conundrum. Because two men can't help each other. I saw him, 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 I saw him,
out of Pomona, California, my brother Sean in North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get quickly to the word of the Lord. Uh, the book of Judges, chapter number 16. Uh, the book of Judges, chapter number 16. The last um, 10 years or so, I've dedicated to dealing with the psychology of the saints. And I've learned a long time now, as we've been dealing with the psychology of the saints, that you can be psychotic in church and not be noticed. But in the world, they'll pick you up quick. And a lot of that is because we allow a whole lot of things that happen in church that we call spiritual. And see, the church culture today, this church culture today, uh, doesn't understand the Holy Ghost. Now, I know that we talk a lot about millennials and the millennial hour, but millennials are not aliens. Uh, millennials, 18 to 35 year olds, if you were uh, a, a millennial now, those, those of you that are here, you have been a millennial or you're going to be a millennial. Jesus was a millennial. Bishop Harry was a millennial. We all were a millennial. So they ain't nothing new under the sun. Even though it's the largest demographic on the earth right now in America. But the truth of the matter is that the church culture that we're in now doesn't really have a grasp on the Holy Ghost. And how can you say that? How can you give such a indictment? Because there is no restraint in this new church culture. The Holy Ghost, the, I don't know how angry you get, the Haggion Numa is proper term. The Haggion Numa will hold you back from doing something else. Yeah. Even if you want to fight, even if you want to cuss, yeah. they will constrain you. Yeah. And there's more displays on social media of praise breaks, but no breakthroughs. Simply because there was no emphasis on the demonstration of what the Holy Ghost is all about in this hour that we live in. Caught that amen. So what's happening, we're, 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 we're having church, but are we relevant? We're having church, but are we relevant? And so the idea of the Holy Ghost now has become more of an experiment and a discovery. Reminds me of the book of Acts, chapter 16, where there were the seven sons of Stephen who saw Paul casting out demons and devils. Read the text accurately. It says, and the seven sons of Stephen called the demon possessed man over to him. Over to them. And said, uh, We adjure you, come out of him in the name of Jesus, the one that Paul preaches. And the demon came out and said, Paul, we know. That's enough to run right there. But anyway, the demon came out and said, Paul we know, and Jesus we know. But who are you? And that's what's happening right now. If hell don't know your name, you ain't nothing in the kingdom. They can know you on Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook, but if hell doesn't know you, you're not known in the kingdom. Hell should be having a conversation about you. Uh, I got cast out last week when I was in the revival. She cast me out of that young boy. I was over there and they rebuked the lying spirit. I know him. But if hell don't know your name, you have not arrived in the kingdom. That's somebody does hell know your name. And see, when you operate outside of the of, 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 of the, the parameter of the Holy Ghost, you do things not for deliverance but for discovery. And see, these seven sons of Stephen wanted to be discovered. They wouldn't want anybody to be delivered. And that's the hour we're living in now. People want a mic, but no mantle. They, 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 they want to preach, but don't want to bend down and serve. She had somebody here in the room. That's why there's a propensity for people to have instantaneous celebration, but no sweat equity. And you can never trust anybody who has no scars. Because scars tell your story. If you don't have any scars, you don't have a journey. You get something by entitlement, but not by work ethic. And some people are getting churches, getting working out. Some people are getting promoted, getting working out, because they're getting it through entitlement. And you can't trust people that get stuff through entitlement. Because God does not anoint entitlement. He anoints assignments. And sometimes people can give you something that's not your assignment. I wish you had so, so now, I'm learning more so than ever before, we are in the, we're in the Laodicean period of the church. The seven churches of Asia Minor, we're in the last church. The church of human rights, the church of civil liberties, everybody wants rights, and we're doing everything but giving Jesus room to do what he does. So right here, you're looking at me funny.
funny, but I used to get in the hole. And so my struggle dealing with the psychology of these legs has been my burden for a long, long, long time. And I realize a lot of things we call spirit are not spirit. Ooh, I'm glad you're in tomorrow. I get mad in the hole. See, how can you call homosexuality and lesbianism a spirit? but not called adultery and fornication. See, because we, we, will, we will vilify what we can't stand. The stuff we dabble in, we call it a weakness. But Galatians 5 calls all the stuff a work of the flesh. Church and masculine and homosexuality or lesbianism, when they come to church, uh, there is no spirit connected to that. I know you may have heard that, but I'm just going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. There is no connection to that being a demonic spirit. It's a work of your flesh. That's why people don't get delivered in church, because we're trying to call it a spirit, and it's a management issue. you got to tell your flesh down, boy. you got to tell your flesh down, boy. After, but not responding to the lust that's operating in them. There's a whole lot of us here tonight felt like killing a few folks in your life, but you didn't kill them, but you felt like it. But you brought your thoughts under subjection. And so what happens, what happens, we start coming up with this, this, this pseudo-theology and calling all this stuff spirits and demons, and it's just not true. That's why people don't get delivered. This is a work of the flesh. Because if it's, if it's a spirit, then everybody can call everything they do in the spirit. I can't help it. I have an adulterous spirit on me. I need to be delivered. I can't help it. I've got a fornicating spirit on me. I need to be delivered. But that's not biblical. <laughs> Comfort it, man. And so dealing with the mind of the slaves, that's been our burden. We had a meeting with a couple of men. I'm preaching on it and over again. We had a couple of, we had a meeting a couple of weeks with men. We had about 300 men come to this, this gathering. We didn't have any praise and worship or no singing or nothing. We just talked. And uh, the consensus, the general consensus is... <laughs>
God. Praise and the significance and the importance of praising God. Sometimes there's a propensity to believe that somebody's a better praiser than another person. And as a result, we don't give God praise simply because we think of praise as a competition with our neighbor. Turn the monitors down someplace. So as a result, what happens, we watch other people praise God and we don't praise Him ourselves. But your praise has its own DNA. In other words, in other words, when you praise God, no matter how loud your neighbor is, turn the monitors down some please. No matter how, how loud your neighbor is, your praise is heard by God distinctly and clearly because he knows your DNA. So when he says, uh, let us all praise the Lord and we will bless the Lord at all times, praise that we give God by the saints houses him. Every praise he hears, but every praise doesn't house him. So when you decide to give God praise, regardless of how loud your neighbor is, God hears your praise, and then he adjusts the meter. I wish we had some people here. Let me give you my point. The Bible says in the book of John that out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. And what that means is, in the Greek it means he adjusts the meter, so if your praise sounds raggedy to people, it sounds wonderful to God. So whatever you can sing or not is inconsequential. Because no matter how bad you sound here, he will adjust the meter and make it sound wonderful by the time it gets together. That's why when you decide to give God praise, you have to actually block out your neighbors and block out the singers, block out the people that can riff and modulate and change keys because he's about to adjust the meter just to hear your sound. But you cannot be a quiet praiser. Praiser will mess up the whole world you're sitting on. Praiser the lady people's clothes. Some of people feel like you did not praise, but they'll start getting it in their clothes. And you think I'm exaggerating and embellishing, but David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. David said, the humble shall hear their love and be glad.
Thank you for taking whatever has happened that could have been worse and working it together for our good. Thank you that the devil is a liar. When he said you wouldn't do it, he lied. When he said you weren't able, he lied again. When he said it was too late, he lied again. When he said it's over, he lied again. Thank you for knowing that the devil is a liar. Now let wisdom come for the next few fleeting moments. Father, I ask you as I always do. Speak through these lips and see through these eyes and hear through these ears and let no flesh glory in your sight. But Father, you get the glory and praise of all that we do and we'll be ever so careful to tell me everywhere that you did this. Uh, and the praise is served you. And the righteous, wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus. Every glad heart that agreed with that prayer said, I believe God. I believe God. In Jesus' name.
a reward is for your assignment. And if there's no assignment on your life, there is no anointing on your life.
that's out of the will of God. But this woman he does not sleep with. This woman gives him something other women did not give him. Other women gave him legs, but this woman gave him a lap. Lord, just ask for your Lord. Okay, let me go to work here. The Bible says, Jesus makes this statement. He said this. He said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man have not a place to lay his head. Men need laps before they need legs. They need a place they can relax and be themselves and not have to compete with anything. You can get legs anywhere, but laps are hard to find. Because he has an assignment on his life. He, had, he was born with one assignment to destroy the Philistines. The Bible said there was no wine to touch his mouth, no razor to touch his head, and he's not going to touch anything dead. I thought because of that, then he should lose his anointing. But he did two already. He already been drunk, which had some money here. He already touched the dead lion, but he's still anointed. And that's his head. I just helped you, you didn't realize it. Because many times when you miss the requirements, mercy makes up your failure. When you miss the requirements, mercy makes up your failure. He's already blue to His head is in the lap of the lion. And she calls talks to him, interrogates him, and he tells her a couple of lies. Then he tells her exactly where the strength comes from. And the Bible says she called in the shears, called in a man. He cut his hair. There's so much of this bishop. I wish I had time to really deal with this. But it's a dangerous thing when the person that you love can call in a creature like you to destroy you. His head is in the lap of Delilah, and while his head is in the lap of Delilah, another man comes in and cuts his hair while his head is in the lap of Delilah. What kind of man are you? Because if you were a real man, you would say, I can't do him like this, I gotta fight him straight up. So the man, uh, I'm moving too fast. So what happens? The Bible says that he cut. Delilah, Delilah of Samson's hair, and the scripture says she afflicted him. Nowhere else does anybody afflict Samson. Go home and read it. No chapter in the Bible does anybody else afflict Samson. This whole chapter 16 doesn't even say the Spirit of God or the Spirit of the Lord. That ain't even in there. Nowhere. No woman, no man has afflicted Samson. But when he lets his guard down because he got a lap to lay in, gets comfortable and gets relaxed and starts telling the secret of the strength, she afflicts him. He said, I'll shake myself like I did at other times. And he knew not the Lord had departed from him. The problem here is he's in Gaza. Now they cut his hair and pull out his eyes and take him to the grinding mill in the arena. The problem is he's in Gaza. Gaza is a holding place. Gaza, you don't die there. You just get tormented. Gaza doesn't destroy you, it discourages you. And sometimes God will hide you in Gaza. When you think it's the enemy, let me give you a sign of If the devil is in Buffalo, he's not in Warren. And see, I'm talking in there. I'm hearing it all over the world. The devil is not everywhere. He is not omnipresent. Job said, uh, when God says, where you been, Satan? He said, oh, walking to and fro, going up and down in the earth. Up and down is in the water. To and fro is on the land. If he's everywhere, he ain't gonna walk. Just try to give him credit in places he ain't even functioning in. You're dealing with demons. We haven't even got to the places God when we need the devil to show up himself. So what happens? Gaza is the place where you're held 
this is all the people talking about. Ooh, I don't know what to say here, boy. I need to say, man, right through here, brother. Right? All right, all right, all right. I can hear the rest of you, brothers. I can get amen, thank you. All right, all right. There are a lot of people who are struggling with what they're supposed to do. And so they think the first thing I need to do is relocate. But when God has an assignment on your life, you don't look for it, it looks for you. And sometimes he has to steal you so he can catch you. While he's in Gaza, his hair is shaved and his eyes are plucked out. Let me prove my argument. Now, when you go to verse 1 of chapter 16, it says this. Then Samson, then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot went in under her. One night stand. Second verse. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they did pass to the end, and laid wait for him all the night in the gate of the city. Watch now. And were quiet all night. Saying in the morning when it is day, we will we shall kill him. Verse 3. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them bar and all and put them up upon his shoulder and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before heaven. Now heaven is 40 miles from Gaza. So the gate that he takes off the city is two stories high. He snatches the gates of the city, puts them on his shoulders, and runs 40 miles. The adrenaline of his anointing took him 40 miles. Now, he's destroyed seemingly and brought back to Gaza. And while he's there, here comes the struggle. They pluck out his eyes, shave his head, put him in the middle of the arena. But the problem is, he's in gospel. I'm preaching to you better than you say anything. Because what has happened for many of us, not all of us, but many of us, we're waiting for God to anoint us for what he wants us to do. And he said, first you have to go through boot camp. And you're not war ready yet. Because everything you know about him now is theoretical. Because you've heard a Sunday school lesson. But now you got to have some war stories. you got to get war ready. You need to know what it's like to have people turn their back on you. No word, no preacher, nobody calling and checking on you. It's a place of, 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 of destitution. When you're in a penurious place, it's only you and God. And sometimes it. When you get there, you start qualifying for your assignment. I don't want anybody praying for me who only pray when they're asked to leave the service. I don't want you praying for me. 
tried to call you, but I couldn't get through. You couldn't get through because God blocked it. You need your Gaza so you can mature. Everything God has to give you does not bring to you. Some things you have to go up and walk to. Everything He's got for you is not going to come to where you are. That's why we got so many babies in the church. Learn how to get up and stop crawling. Learn how to get up and walk in your name. Hell. And then he wrote. See, your assignment. 
target these triggers. Joseph was in prison. He was in prison when he started interpreting other people's dreams. When he wasn't in prison, he was having his own dreams. His assignment was not to be a dreamer. His assignment was to be an interpreter of dreams. He only interpreted his own dream because he was practicing on himself before he started working in his ministry. So God ain't going to practice privately. That's the way you make a mess publicly. But if you learn how to practice privately, then you have a better anointing public. You can't start studying when it's time to preach tonight. You should have been studying six months ago when you didn't have the microphone.
He already lost it. 
assignment on your life. She got five babies, but she's still here. Right before God, they ain't even dead. What you gonna do with Rahab? The heart, the heart, who married the prince of Israel in the book of Frank Luke in the genealogy of Jesus Christ.
trying to humiliate people. He wants the blood to come.